Okay. Uh, on to, uh, so this is joint work with Gal Benjamini, and uh, uh, so this is. Uh, okay. What we do is the uh, we count rational points on transcendental sets. So the uh, uh, so okay. The, the okay. The question of finding rational points on different sets is an old question. So uh, okay, probably starting from Pythagoras and. Uh, uh, okay, so the there are many examples where okay, uh, okay. It, uh, so let me formulate explicitly what I want to do. So there is no uh, in general there is no hope. Okay, in many cases the number of points is infinite, so we cannot just say there are many. How many rational points are on the set? So what we do, we study asymptotic of the number of rational points as the height of the rational point goes to infinity. So for rational number, we define the height of the rational number as a maximum of the numerator and denominator. And uh, for a vector in uh, okay, the rational coordinates, th this is the maximum height of its coordinates. And uh, for a subset of Rn, we define the, uh, okay, A of Q is just the, the rational points of the set A, and uh, in general can be infinite. And we define this number as the rational points on the set A with height bounded by H. It depends. Okay, as H grows, this set grows. And the question is how fast it can grow with, uh, with uh, H. Okay, and the, mm, okay, so the, uh, okay, there are two examples, which I, okay, so the first, so I, I'll, so this is, uh, the one example, this is a graph of the function 2 to the power x. And the, okay, and the graph of the function of x of the x to the power g. And uh, one can compute in this case, one can compute asymptotics of this number. So here it is. Uh, This number is approximately log h. And here it is approximately uh, h to the power 2 over d. So this is, uh, these are the kind of the examples which hint how the, in general, what happens in general. Ah, probably I'll just drop it. Do you consider a compact subset of the Yeah, yeah, I, I, uh, no. Over real numbers, it contains infinite numbers uh, of uh, integer points with integer uh, Yeah, 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 yes, yeah. Uh, no, but, but integer points are covered. So here I, I, okay. Integer, height of the integer point is just the absolute value of the integer point. So, but in general, it is a correct remark that we, we should, we bound ourselves to compact pieces of, uh, we consider bounded subsets of Rn. Okay, so the, um, so, okay, so the starting point is the bombieri pila <coughs> theorem. So, uh, it is kind of the simplest, simplest setting. So, we consider a curve in, on the plane, on the real plane, analytic curve, which uh, with coordinates, okay, f1, f, f2 of t, analytic function on some interval. And the gamma is, the curve is just the image of this interval. 
and we count the number this number which was defined before and uh, the uh, theorem is as follows suppose that gamma is not an algebraic curve is not contained in an algebraic curve then for every epsilon uh, there exists some constant such that the number of points uh, of height h grows at most as degree of h so the growth of is sub polynomial so it grows the number of points grows slower than any uh, degree of h so and this is kind of what the this example is about so as d goes to infinity the number of points is smaller and smaller yeah? so it's 2 divided by d so uh, transcendental curves correspond to d is infinity kind of okay um, now uh, the okay so uh, so in other words if the number of rational points on the curve is big then it means that the curve is algebraic okay now um, uh, okay so I'll try to indicate how uh, how the original proof goes uh, on the next slide uh, so the uh, few remarks so trivial kind of the uh, if you take just any compact analytically reducible curve on um, in the plane then you can parameterize it by pieces by finitely many pieces and for every piece we'll have this theorem and so this just okay just holds for any anal compact analytically reducible curve so it is the parameterization is kind of uh, can be omitted here and uh, okay for algebraic curves it doesn't work for uh, okay now the uh, is the bound is sharp it is sharp you can build counterexamples some specific lacunary series will give you some counterexample uh, and um, uh, but they are kind of not not natural in some sense so the um, okay so how the proof goes so I'll try to indicate how proof goes the goal, goal is the following so the main middle point of the proof is the following we have a curve So the, the idea is the following. We have on the plane, on the plane, we have a curve. And uh, our goal, intermediate kind of statement, is the following. That all points which we count, the, I count the points, uh, this point. So I have several points. And the claim is that uh, if there are uh, okay, many points in this sense, that in fact they all lie on uh, algebraic curves of some degree G. Okay, so we have several algebraic curves of degree D. Uh, and the number of such curves is, is this number of curves. So this is the intermediate step. From this, it follows by general uh, Gabrielov type claims that uh, the number of points is exactly this. Okay. Basically, because uh, okay, let me say that by Gabrielov theorem. Uh, no, we are for given epsilon, we choose d, which is uh, equal basically one over epsilon, more or less. 
And then it turns that the here stands. Yes, yes. So if all, all points, all rational points of degree h, lie on this number of curves of degree d, and by Gabriel of the number of uh, number of intersections of uh, analytic curve with uh, any algebraic curve of degree d is bounded by some number which depends only on the curve and on the degree d. So, and this will be exactly this constant c. So kind of uh, here is the only place where we use that the uh, curve is not algebraic. Because if it is algebraic, then uh, the intersection can be the whole curve. And then the number of points will be infinite. But here, because it is transcendental, this intersection is just a couple of points. And this number, their number is bounded by this constant. OK, so excuse me? The, this bound? Uh, Yes. Uh, we know that it exists. It is come some implicit construction. Yeah. It, it, okay. The, it, the, we have curve points, and uh, we found that there is a curve, polynomial curve from degree d, which passes through them. It, uh, no, the, the points are of height h at most. So once again, we, we look on this set. No, no, if you, even you lose the height, your curve doesn't change, your curve changes. No, it changed. Their number changes. Curve changes also according to h. Yes, the number of these curves changes. The degree remains the same, but their number grows. The, yes, yes. No, you add some new curves, probably. OK. So the, uh, so this is the, uh, what we want to prove that the, OK, all points belong to uh, about h of epsilon algebraic curve of degree d. Now, uh, so this is uh, so how we show that some points lie on the curve of degree d. So we have collection of points on the plane, and uh, okay, how we know that there exists a polynomial curve of degree d passing through all of them. The answer is this, that this is question of linear algebra. So the on the space of all polynomials of degree d. Mm, we have uh, each point gives us a linear functional. If there is a common uh, okay, combination of monomials which is vanishing on all of them, then this is our polynomial. So, uh, so what we, uh, so the <coughs> convenient form for criterion for existence of such a curve is just vanishing of the, of a polynomial of the determined. We evaluate monomials, uh, the basis of this space of polynomials on these points. And uh, uh, compute the determinant. If it is 0, then there is a common solution. If there are more points, we have to compute rank. So it is more or less the same. OK, so basically, the main object of investigation is this interpolation determinant. We evaluate monomials at these points. Now, um, the uh, so okay. So we want to show that it is zero. We want to show that there exists an algebraic curve of the group D passing through this point. So we want to show that this is zero. 
And uh, how it is shown that t is zero, this is the standard trick. So from one side, we know that these points are rational points of given height. So when we compute monomial, just product of coordinates, on this point, it is some rational number of given height. So this determinant will be a determinant. So the whole matrix will be filled by rational numbers. And we know their height. So the determinant is also of known height. So it is a rational number with a known, with not so big denominator. So it is either 0 or at or it least something. So this is 1. Uh, then one bound is that it is bigger than uh, g in some uh, degree. Uh, a cube, I think. And this is just follows from the fact that the points are rational. And uh, or zero. This is the first rationality because and uh, the second part is bound from above the absolute value of this guy. OK. And uh, if the bound will be smaller than this, we will conclude that this is 0, and we are done. So how to bound this guy from above? So here we didn't use anything, just the rationality of the point. So now we have to use something. And this something is that these points lie on a curve. So recall that this curve uh, so this is how our curve is defined. We have actually these coordinates are just given by analytic functions uh, on the interval. So, so let's take these uh, points in the, um, uh, OK. Uh, these are already complex settings. So let's say they, they're on the disk of absolute value less than delta. And then let's, these guys will be holomorphic functions bounded by 1 in the disk. Then the determinant of these, uh, so I evaluate these functions at these points. And I claim the determinant is at something of this order. And the proof is very simple. This is. Uh, we just develop in the Taylor series all these functions and uh, develop this determinant by multilinearity. So if uh, so, then what I'll get is uh, many many terms. In each term, this each column will be replaced by some monomial. So if uh, the uh, if the if two monomials are equal, then the determinant will contain two equal points, two equal columns. It will be zero. So it means that okay, the monomials should not cannot repeat themselves, and so we get this bound from above. Yeah. So we get this bound for. Uh, the determinant. So we get the delta uh, about uh, G4. And uh, from here we see that, OK, how we apply this claim, we, OK, these GI are in fact just the monomials. So they are products of the coordinates f i, f one, and f two in different degrees. So g i, f one, n one, f two, n two. So these are. We take these monomials and apply this estimate, and so we have these two contradicting bounds. And from here we see that if delta is less than something. Uh, uh, 
uh, sorry, h to the power then uh, h to the power uh, minus uh, 1 over d yeah. uh, then for this delta if you have many points many rational points on an interval then they all lie on algebraic curve and here the proof goes so this was the kind of the uh, <laughs> the idea of the proof and uh, um, mm, okay so basically it is simple counting and Taylor series uh, now and the clever combination of all of them. <laughs> now, um, okay, so this, the result which started a huge uh, domain, so the, uh, uh, this is the generalization of Peel and Wilkie of this result. So, uh, okay, so uh, let uh, suppose so w what is the generalization? We, we want to, uh, to generalize uh, this bound for high dimensional sets. What is the evident obstacle is that this set can contain an algebraic curve. And as we know, algebraic curve can contain a lot of rational points. So what we do, we should surely throw away algebraic part of the set. So it can be the set itself is kind of transcendental, but inside it can be that there is a algebraic curve inside. So, so if we consider, I don't know, z x to the power y, then this is a transcendental set, but inside we have uh, z equal uh, x square, uh, y equal to 2, which is algebraic curve which contains a lot of rational points. Yeah? So all these guys we should throw away. And so we get transcendental part, which is inside. And then uh, it is kind of this, when we are, when we deal with this, with this trivial obstacle. So it turns out that this is uh, good enough already and the peel wilkie theorem claims that we have the same bound for the same sub-polynomial growth for any A which is definable in an O minimum structure. Do you have all this finite number of uh, semi-algebraic subsets or no? No, no. Here, for example, for any any rational uh, for any rational, any rational is, uh, it can be quite a big, in general, it can be quite a big set. No, but, uh, uh, yeah, countable union of. Do you really need connected? Uh, yeah. Probably not. Uh, I don't know why I put it, but I remember there was a reason. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, okay. So. Um, okay. So this is uh, was uh, published in 2006, and this led to a huge uh, number of results in a number theory by the following. P lasagna strategy. So uh, there are some many interesting sets for which this uh, transcendental part is equal to A. So there are no algebraic subsets. Okay. And uh, so for these interesting sets, there are two uh, facts which hold. So first, there is no algebraic part. And second, uh, there are some Galois type arguments 
which show that if you just found one point of given height, then you can find a lot of them. So as soon as you found one, then OK, the kind of degree, some h to one half of them, square root of h. Yeah? And uh, so basically, if there is one, then there are many. But we know that there are few. So there are no at all. Huh? What is? B is the some constant which depends on the set. Uh, and here, the, the basically, the uh, in many cases, this constant kind of is, is existential. So the, the question of computing this constant for different sets is an uh, important question, and not trivial. Okay. So uh, it means that uh, there are no rational points with some height, which can be explicitly computed if you know the involved constant. So if you know the r, if you know the c of the constant in the pure wilkie theorem, uh, and uh, the constant in Gula, then you can actually compute this h. And uh, OK, in particular, it will follow that there are only finitely many rational points on the set a. Uh, and uh, this kind of was applied successfully to manin manford conjecture and reward conjecture. So there are kind of Maisie Zanya results so about all this stuff. And there is a lot of results which I do not quite understand. OK. Uh, now, OK, so, um, so the next slide is essentially about the computing. So do we know how to compute this constant? So OK. So if you are interested in this constant, then this is one of the main ingredients. OK. And uh, it depends on the problem which you study, so kind of uh, abelian functions or modular functions or whatever. Now it turns out that all many of this uh, scenario can be um, United under the roof of Noetherian functions. So there is a class of Noetherian functions which generalize the class of Pfeffian functions and uh, which is much bigger. So basically, uh, okay, Pfeff functions include some uh, triangular conditions uh, and Noetherian functions are just. Uh, 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 more general class. They are not as nice as few normal, so there are no global bounds on their topology, but uh, uh, locally they seem to be good. So the example is sinus, which is not Pfeffian function, but which is not there. Now, I don't want to go into exact definitions, but this is uh, OK, interesting class. OK, it turns out that uh, for an Ethereum class, uh, Gal B should be Binyamini. OK, so for an Ethereum class, this constant can be explicitly estimated. And uh, in terms of the Ethereum parameters, in terms of the complexity of Ethereum functions, which describe the set A. OK, and uh, this. Uh, kind of covers many different uh, things. So it covers elliptic abelian functions. And so we have some effective version of Manning Mumford conjecture. It covers modular functions. So we get Andre Orr conjecture and uh, all these, uh, okay, Verstas functions and uh, all, all these guys are kind of we get some effectivity for the bounds. OK. <clears throat> um, OK. So now, now I'll go, what are the main ideas in uh, the proof of peel wilkie theorem? So basically, the idea is exactly the same. So we, uh, we kind of go to the same interpolation determinant. We can write it exactly as before, 
uh, in many different in many dimensions and the conclusion will be the same conclusion so the rational points will lie uh, on uh, uh, on uh, about this number of hypersurfaces of degree given degree and uh, so they lie on the intersection of the set A and these hypersurfaces and here's the difference is that uh, in our case here uh, in the for curves this intersection was just points so here for curves we just stopped for higher dimensional sets we get some intersection which has smaller dimension and we continue inductively the problem is uh, the first step and um, this is what Gal was speaking on the first day so the first step we should cover this intersection by images of some interval some cubes and um, the okay so uh, and as Gal was speaking this is not possible in holomorphic category so we cannot hope to get this parameterization holomorphic because we want our bounds to be uniform we don't know actually anything about these hypersurfaces except the degree so we have to cover them uniformly with respect to degree and this is impossible if you want these f's to be holomorphic and what Peel and Wilkie did they used the uh, yomdin gromov parameterization which was developed for okay entropy uh, okay but uh, and which gives so they uh, uh, did not uh, this is not analytic parameterization but only CR smooth for some large R and this is enough um, for um, for our interpolation determines because we actually use the Taylor series with remainder it's up just to find it Taylor polynomials we need and uh, so this is how the proof works the uh, uh, problem is with this guy so um, okay now uh, next thing is the following so the remember that I told that the Peel Wilkie bound is sharp, but the examples which show that it's sharp they are kind of artificially constructed. So uh, the conjecture is that if our set is kind of natural set, a good set, then uh, the bound should be better. So the in fact it's not sub polynomial but just polynomial of log. And uh, uh, this is Mil uh, Wilkie conjecture, which was formulated in uh, 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 yeah uh, in nineties, I think. Um, okay, and um, um, it stands. It is not okay. It stands, and it uh, uh, in some sense uh, okay. It is also very interesting. Okay. Now, uh, what we proved, so we, we consider the O minimal structure like this. So we do not uh, allow the exponential function. So Rx are just polynomials, and you add, you consider structure generated with polynomials and uh, the graph of the function y equal e x of x. Graph of exponential. So, uh, and you take equalities, inequalities, uh, projections, whatever. This, by result of field, it is a O minimal structure. Now, we consider a smaller category. We take the, again, polynomials. We add uh, restricted exponent and restricted sign. So this is, uh, so we don't take the whole graph of the equipoint, only a small part. And uh, a bounded part of sign. Okay, and um, this somehow, okay, 
on any compact set it is more or less the same uh, but the essential singularity of exponent at infinity is kind of thrown away uh, and the uh, our theorem is that this bound holds for this in this case and in general the the constant the degree can be computed the constant is uh, kind of computable so for a subset of this structure uh, now um, okay so uh, let me speak about restrict elementary function so the the big uh, okay what we use is that these functions are Pfeffian so uh, these are polynomial combination of solutions of triangular system of algebraic differential equation so we, this thing shows how you can obtain sine by so derivative of sine is cosine derivative of cosine is prog of tangent and cosine so but derivative of tangent is function of tangent so all of them are uh, so Pfeffian functions so tangent is Pfeffian because its derivative is 1 plus tangent square uh, so the so from here we see that tangent is Pfeffian function on the interval minus uh, pi over 2 pi over 2 yeah so on the finite interval where it is continuous it is Pfeffian and uh, so we conclude that the cos that the sine is Pfeffian on finite interval the singularity of tangent prevent it from being Pfeffian on the whole line okay and um, um, the key fact about this that uh, the complexity of sets defined by Pfeffian functions can be explicitly bounded from above in terms of degrees of the equations so this is kind of what is uh, the Grom of Yomdin parameterization is also it is bounded only in terms of degrees so the, the, we, there is no dependence on the coefficients uh, and um, so this is uh, Holansky theory of phenomenals and then you can be extended to same five sub five set by Gabriel and Vorobiev. So we have the same explicit bounds on the complexity. Okay. And uh, this is why um, uh, this is uh, why this uh, structure is useful because actually we can, it's like polynomials, you can say what is the complexity uh, bounds on the topology of the set there. Um, okay now uh, the proof of the so I'll speak about the proof of this theorem so there are essentially two ideas here and the okay, okay as usual there are a lot of technical results kind of uh, ta -ta -ta, but the heart of the matter are two things the first thing is following that uh, the uh, first is the introduction of the Weierstrass pulley disk so uh, the idea is the following. Suppose we have, uh, so let me recall the, what was Gal speaking. So suppose we have a hyperbola And we want to parameterize it uniformly by images of interval. Then the number of such intervals will go to infinity. Uh, okay, the number of f's goes to infinity as epsilon goes to zero. So 
from the Pila-Wilke theorem uh, point of view, this is horrible because uh, there is no uniform bound. Uh, so, but if you look on this, okay, on this equation, then this equation depends very nicely on epsilon. Nothing happens. So epsilon can go to zero. It can uh, kind of pass zero. The equation is just just a parameter. Nothing happens. So the idea is that we don't need really a parameterization like this. We can allow multivalued parameterization. So what we do, we uh, project. We kind of say that, OK, let's take this polydisc and just project our curve to the interval, OK, minus 1, 1. And uh, this kind of uh, over this interval, y squared is completely good, kind of nothing. It is two varied parameterization, but it, it depends very nicely on parameter. So, uh, so this is uh, the Weierstrass polydisc. So Weierstrass polydisc is it has a base where we pro so um, um, okay. Uh, base is of the same dimension as the set, and uh, we want that the number of points in the fibers. <coughs> we want to project our set to the base, and uh, we want the number of points to be the same. So actually, what we want is that the set does not run from the fibers uh, uh, through the upper or lower boundary. Yeah? So the set goes through the walls. Then the number of uh, the degree of projection, the number of points in the fiber is the same, and we have good degree of projection like this. And uh, then, um, OK, so uh, now, Mm. So suppose that our function is <coughs> holomorphic on a, on our polydisc, which is uh, which is uh, three times bigger, and uh, polynomial of this degree on each of this. Okay, so uh, sorry. <laughs> suppose we have a function which is uh, holomorphic on a the polydisc. Then we say that its restriction to our set. Uh, is equal to restrictions of polynomial uh, in the polynomial in the fiber with holomorphic with coefficients holomorphic in the base, you know, like in Verstrass theorem, and we can write a bound on this. Uh, okay, everything is good with uh, uniform bounds, yeah. and uh, the proof is kind of uh, uh, given by this. Uh, in dimension one, this is just interpolation polynomial. Right? So it is given by this integral. Okay. Now, um, so basically, what we uh, do is um, uh, so if you have a function which is holomorphic. Okay. So um, so so this is the example. So what we uh, we have this example. Uh, we take this uh, polydisc, and okay, we can do the same uh, interpolation. Looking on the Taylor series, we just replace. We develop this guy in the Taylor series into variables and replace each w square by this thing. So this will be the. Interpolation polynomial. Okay. Now the um, um, and now we can uh, repeat the Bombieri peel argument. So we can construct algebraic surface of degree. So we kind of collect them all together, and we get algebraic surface of this degree containing um, this. Uh, this set. 
the irrational points of degree h. Uh, hmm? uh, yeah, uh, it will be uh, in the moment. Okay. So the um, um, okay. So the, the main point is that we replace the polynomial interpolation by Taylor series expansion here uh, by this uh, Weierstrass interpolation, Weierstrass theorem. Okay, and so we do not deal with nasty, finitely smooth argument, but work with entirely with holomorphic series, which is always nicer, and so on. Okay, the... Um, okay. So uh, how it works? It works exactly as before. So we, uh, the, again, the problem is to get this estimate. What's the difference? Before, we had just Taylor series for, for the hyperbola here. Before, we had just Taylor series. Now, we had one Taylor series and another Taylor series, and that multiplied by double. And so instead, before, we had just degrees of z. Now we have z, w, z, okay. A constant, w, z, z, w, okay. So we have twice, we have more monomials. And so instead of uh, just this argument, we'll get here divided by e. And this is kind of the only change which is not affecting the asymptotics. Uh, yes. Now, okay, we're log h. So, so what we mm, uh, yes, it's it's uh, yeah, it's it's not okay. Half of the argument is here; another half is hidden in the computation. Okay, so so how we prove the Wilkie conjecture? So we we start with some set a. Uh, build uh, some complexification using general result of van den Ries quantifier elimination, ta 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 ta, and this will be Pfeiffian complex set. Okay, here we cover X by Weierstrass polydisks, and this replace this uh, parameterization with intervals. And uh, it turns out we can. Uh, this is the crucial step. And for every polydisc, we construct algebraic hypersurface of this degree, containing these guys. And uh, they cut from our set something of degree one less. Everything is uh, okay, controlled complexity. So we can continue by induction. So the crucial step is. Uh, uh, crucial step is this one. So we, so this, no, okay. The generalization, the replacement of Grom of Yomden parameterization. Uh, so we should cover a set of complex uh, com set of given complexity by Weierstrass polydisc with some and control the number of this fish that we this. Now the uh, turns out that the uh, okay. Uh, this is kind of the main point of the uh, uh, of the thing, and this is kind of I I don't want to speak about multidimensional sets. So let me uh, just, uh, but the essential thing is contained in the planner, real planner picture. So what we want, we have some in C2, we have some curve, and we want to find the Weierstrass polydisc Uh, of big size covering, uh, so collection of Weierstrass polydisc covering this set X. And this guy is big. 
Okay. So, uh, so we want this to contain a ball of quite big radius around the origin. So, uh, so if we found this, then we can find okay polynomial. Okay, we can cover the whole set X by balls of this radius, and we are done. Okay. So what what was the picture? What is the Virchow's polynomial? So we have. Uh, Base, uh, and we multiply it by fiber, and we want this uh, okay, big fiber, and we want this boundary uh, the whole this boundary we don't want this boundary to intersect our set x, so this boundary should be disjoint from the set X. OK. So, um, uh, so what is the idea? We take, we want to take a ball outside of set X, such that if we multiply it by S1, then it will not intersect our set X. And so what we want. Uh, so this is what we want. This will be the, will contain this boundary. We want this boundary to be disjoint from gamma. So this should be disjoint from gamma. But this is the same as to require B to be disjoint from rotation of gamma. So we have some curve. We want some ball which will not intersect the set after rotation. This is the same as we keep this in place and we just rotate the set. OK, and so, but this guy is something of known complexity, known okay, degree. So, um, and the answer is the uh, metric entropy called the Tushkin formula. So, let me uh, finish it. Uh, so, essentially, this is the following. So, suppose we have on the plane, we have a curve of degree d. And so essentially what we want is to find the ball of radius of this radius polynomial in d in the unit square, which does not cut this curve. OK, so um, uh, and the proof is in the picture. So we have the curve. This the red is the curve of given degree. Let's just put the uh, grid on this unit square. And uh, uh, just let compute the number of squares this curve intersects. So the, OK, so the number of connect components of the curve is known. It is t square. The number of uh, intersections between uh, gamma and the line in the grid is at most d because it is kind of one line and curve of degree d. So it means that we have at most, uh, uh, OK, this number of, uh, uh, this number of cells in the grid. Yeah? So there are some components which probably lie inside, which don't have any grid. But the rest should be, curve should enter and exit. And so, but OK, so this is linear function of n, but the number of cells is square. There are n square cells. So if n is sufficiently big, we'll get some square which is disjoint from the curve. And this is the ball which we want, the ball which lie inside. And uh, OK, and this means that <coughs> using this ball, we count, we build the VH truss cells and uh, run the uh, run the proof okay thank you